Today, royals, politicians, banksters, and businessmen form the inner circle of the Sabbatean Frankist elite. They live secret, two-faced lives, sometimes posing as religious Jews or Christians or Islamists. Modern Zionism is rooted in the unholy alliance of Frank, Weishaupt, and Rothschild. It has infiltrated world religions, taken over Freemasonry, engineered wars and revolutions, and turned nations and citizens into their debt slaves worldwide. Unfortunately, Muslims, Christians, and Jews do not recognize their common enemy because that enemy is invisible. It hides within their own religions. The enemy also hides within the activist community. It finances big budget documentaries and movements. The end game is to sell a divisive, anti-capitalist, atheistic message and deliver trusting followers right into the lap of a communist New World Order. New World Order, Mr. New World Order. Depopulation. Oh, listen, who, who are you? Genocide. Who are you televising for? We just want to let you know, the New World Order has no legitimacy. Oh, yeah. And that we as a people are not afraid, and we are waking up to the robber barons and the big banksters who are looting okay. this economy with the Federal Reserve. Well... What do you... I mean, the Rothschilds family did start the Federal... You know, they divided Europe first, no, no, no. took over Europe, the Napoleon... Thank you, Zachary. He's, um... That it, it does say that there is no such thing as evil. You know, th these people have a belief that says evil is in the mind of the Gentile. Mm -hmm. And it's only because of their uh, lack of spiritual enlightenment that they believe that, that people are evil or that evil exists. Uh, but if they were of a better mind, they would not see these things as evil. It comes down to these teachings from Kabbalah, which says that, that you know, in this world there is no there, there is no evil, or, or it even says in um, a, another slightly different spin on the same thing, it says that evil in the world is there from the left hand of God, and because God has a left hand where all evil comes from, if we work evil in the world, we are doing God's work in the world. We are working His left hand. These are the, uh, this is absolutely true. You can study, anybody can study the Kabbalah and they will find that these are core teachings, fundamental, not extreme to one side. These are very, very central to the core because they say God is uh, uh, infinite without personality and therefore evil exists and they use the Kabbalah as the basis for understanding evil in the world and they say it exists but it's not really evil and specifically the Lurian Kabbalah. And you will find that these people believe the same thing throughout time. Shabbat the should be known to every Jew. He really should be in Jewish history something unique and huge, because more than half the Jews of the world thought he was the Messiah, and um, they did an incredibly stupid, stupid things in the days of redemption. Uh, this was in the sixteen um, sixteen sixties. Uh, when he declared that he was the Messiah of the Jews, and he ordered the Jews uh, to um, blaspheme the Torah. That's putting it mildly. Uh, what he decided was that debauchery was theology, uh, that every word of the Torah is true in the opposite sense. That means 613 mitzvot were all sins. And all the sins became misfolks. And, well, let, let's take a simple example. Do not kill became do kill. Do not adulter became do adulter. Uh, Purim was his, his favorite holiday. That was the annual wife swappers holiday. Uh, it was called the extinct. Treatises of the Talmud are found extensive passages which give legal endorsement to seduce and marry three-year-old baby girls. In fact, many of the greatest rabbis of the Talmud, including Simeon ben Yochai, upheld this privilege. Today in Israel, thousands of Jews go to Meron every year to venerate the memory of Simeon ben Yochai, one of the most respected rabbis in the history of Judaism. In one of dozens of endorsements of child sex, Simeon ben Yochai said, 
A proselyte under the age of three years and a day is permitted to marry a priest. Agreeing with Ben Yohai, the great Rabba said, When a grown-up man has intercourse with a little girl, it is nothing. Or when the girl is less than this, three years and a day, it is as if one put the finger into the eye. The footnote to this passage says, As tears come to the eye again and again, so does virginity come back to the little girl under three years. The same section confirms that sexual activity with small boys is in the same category. The intercourse of a small boy is not regarded as a sexual act. In addition to adulterers, Christ, in the story of the Good Samaritan, portrayed the Pharisees as racial bigots, too self-righteous to respond to the suffering of one who was not a Jew. It is true because of the wickedness of the Canaanites, which included sodomy and infant sacrifice, Israel had been commanded by God to be harsh in her treatment of the inhabitants of the land. God made it clear that the Canaanites were not simply to be avoided, but destroyed. By the time of the New Testament, this method of preserving God's kingdom by separation and the sword had become obsolete. God no longer made a racial difference between men. But the Pharisees were unfazed by God's new agenda. The Talmud was finally written down nearly five centuries after Christ. Yet its critical, even homicidal attitudes toward Gentiles might have been lifted out of the book of Joshua. However, the quickest way to grasp the Talmudic view of Gentiles is not directly from the Talmud, but from the Jewish encyclopedias. If we quote an isolated opinion from the Talmud, a rabbi may quickly object saying, I may quickly object saying, but that is not the overall opinion of the Talmud. That is not the definitive view. What the Jewish encyclopedia provides us is a definitive overview of perhaps hundreds of rabbinic statements on any subject, giving us accurate summaries of what the Talmud generally teaches. In its article on Gentiles, the Jewish encyclopedia begins to define what makes a Jew so different from a Gentile. According to the rabbis, only Israelites are men. Gentiles they class not as men, but as barbarians. Since Gentiles are not men in the fullest sense, so the Gentile is not a neighbor of a Jew. Further, since Gentile laws were too crude to admit of reciprocity, meaning too crude to be taken seriously, the Gentile was forever beneath the Jew. Gentiles were outlawed by God from the beginning and thus had no property rights. The Almighty offered the Torah to the Gentile nations also, but since they refused to accept it, he withdrew his shining legal protection from them and transferred their property rights to Israel, who observed his law. In the Holocaust, there is so much sensitivity. Well, if we go back to, and this is what's important, if we go back to the father of Zionism, Thomas Herzl, who was a, uh, an agent, he was an Ashkenazi Jew, he was an agent of Rothschild, this is what it states in his diaries. It is essential that the sufferings of Jews become worse. This will assist in realization of our plans. I have an excellent idea. I shall induce anti-Semites to liquidate Jewish wealth. The anti-Semites will assist us thereby in that they will strengthen the persecution and oppression of Jews. The anti-Semites shall be our best friends. This is a quote from the diary of the father of the Zionist movement, an Ashkenazi Jew, which led to the creation of Israel. Okay, so when when Ahmadinejad refers not to Jews, but to Zionists, which is a political institution, organization, and creation, meant to tear up the Middle East, because, as I said, the Persians are not stupid. They saw what the banking influence of Rothschild did in destroying the Ottoman Empire, and recreating the, the Middle East after World War I in all these nation states, which the British, the Germans, the Belgians, the French, all came through and colonialized and took control over. They knew that it, the, uh, the originating factor was not the Jewish people, but it was the Zionist creation of the Rothschilds. He shows he had uh, Christian uh, factors, uh, theologians behind him. He declared he was the Messiah on June 18th of 1666. Uh, 
June, of course, is the sixth month. 18 is uh, six times three, and we don't have to, uh, plus 666 is obvious enough. And on that day, the, all of a sudden, it was the time of redemption, and the Jews could do anything they wanted. You know, his, his prayer, uh, the, the prayer that the Jews quoted were, blessed be he who permits the forbidden. That was the actual Sabbath day in prayer. And the Jews went through an orgy worldwide. Of, uh, again, the Christians would call it Satanism. Uh, but it was certainly, certainly, uh, he changed Judaism in the worst possible way. For those unacquainted with this piece of history, the Rothschilds are the Sabbatians of and here is why. There was a meeting that took place apparently in Rothschild's humble home that in 1786, he was not all that wealthy. He was a, a coin dealer. His sons made him wealthy. His five sons uh, expanded a business. The business was to control the economies of nations and thus control the nations. He found a, magnif a magnificent formula if we can get hold of the nations, economies, we've got the nations. He sat with Jacob Frank, who wanted the Jews to become non-Jews. He wanted them to become Sabbatians. He wanted them to accept the real Messiah of the Jews, Shabtai Tzvi, and incidentally, and the second Messiah, of Jacob Frank. That's one of this little three-pointed triangle. That's one point. Adam Weishaupt was the founder of something called the Illuminati. Favor, please. Don't speak about the Illuminati. The Illuminati is considered one of these things where the Jews are taking over the world. No, what you no let me go, go on. I can't change what, what is so the fact. No, no, no. This is I, not true. This no, I'm not. True All right, questions at the end, and that's that. You have to deal with facts, and they're not nice facts. What they did, quite simply, was they had to overturn the existing societies. And unfortunately for us Jews, they did a real job. Now let me tell you uh, um, um, that all of this was banned. Now the story in all the history books is the same thing, that there was, uh, just before the French Revolution, a horseman fell. In his satchel were the plans for the revolution. In the satchel were the plans for the Illuminati and so forth. It was all banned. Throughout Europe, it was banned. And that put Weishaupt, that put Rothschild, and to a lesser degree, Frank, into a problem. What do you do if you're banned? And they came up with something that has changed history for good. Weishaupt said, well, what we do is we take our tenants and we put them into an organization that has lodges and chapters worldwide, and we subvert the existing organization to our tenants. And the organization they chose was British Freemasonry. Now, there was no such thing as a Freemasonic uh, conspiracy before the 18th century. As far as I can tell, they were very nice. They were a builder's guild. They, they uh, backed builders throughout Europe, and they were all right. All of a sudden, there are revolutions. All of a sudden, you have something you never saw before, ever. You actually saw talk of one organization upending whole nations. Now, here's where the Jews fit in, and this is the scary part. You now have a new world. Germany is Sabbatianism. That is where it began. Turkey is the Don. That's the home of Shabtai speed. It's a major player, but it's now being shifted. The real players from here on in were Germany first, and then London. Where okay, just want to comment. There's a lot of history about the Sabbatarians. Um, but they are in control of Turkey and what you've got to realise is that the recent 
uh, gas attacks in Syria, a lot of that came from Turkey. And Turkey are very much involved in this. And you got to realise the powers that are behind this. They are Sabbatarians. They're what you might call crypto-Jews. They're Jews that don't want to be Jews. Uh, they're Jews that are trying to subvert um, every religion, um, including Christianity. So as you heard um, this man talk about that they're in favour of uh, twisting every single law in scripture. Now there's, there's also been uh, certain Christians who have said that there's demons uh, which uh, get you to eat kosher. There's demons that get you to observe a Sabbath, you see. So everything's the, res the, re the reverse in the Illuminati. Everything is the reverse. You know, so if the Bible says not to lie, then they will lie. They, they, they will uh, deceive. If the Bible says not to commit adultery, they'll commit all forms of adultery. You know, if the Bible says not to covet, they will covet things. And so on. Uh, the Bible obviously talks about keeping the Sabbath holy and not working on a Sabbath, but these people make sure that they're working on a Sabbath. And all this doctrine has penetrated uh, not only Judaism, but all, also, I believe they've changed the Sabbath within Judaism. Uh, they changed the Christian Sabbath as well, but they make sure that uh, a lot of Christians are working on Sabbaths now. Uh, if you go to third world countries, they'll go to church in the morning and they'll work in the afternoon. So this is this is breaking their own laws. Um, if they think that any of these false Roman days are Sabbaths, again, it's a, a deception. And it's a very, very layered history we're talking about here. But uh, the Sabbatarians are involved in Turkey, what's going on in the White House at the moment. So we'll just run through a little bit more about that. The son has the father. Who denies the son but says has the father? those of the Judaic faith. The fact of the matter is, and this is uncomfortable to say, but it's reality, Judaism is antichrist because it denies Jesus and claims to be of the Father. And the more I look at this topic and the more I look at Bible prophecy, the more I see and I understand why martyrdom will take place. Now, Jared Kushner is reported to be a Hasidic Jew. And back in... Okay, so this is uh, Shield of the Sun. Uh, sorry, not Shield of the Sun. Face Like the Sun uh, video. Which he goes into um, Kushner. Um, and his links with uh, the very technological side of Israel. The fact that they're very heavily involved in nanotechnology, which... Uh, if you study chemtrails, nanotechnology is is a thing that Israel helped develop. Um, so you can see the link there, and you can see the link to the end time technology of, of the Antichrist. I believe that he's just, they're all just puppets. Um, they're all just doing their job <clears throat> until the man of sin appears um, on the stage after um, the Third World War, whoever he, whoever he is. You just got to be aware that um, the Jewish people have had to endure uh, this very evil wickedness within um, Judaism. Judaism itself um, speaks of the Messiah, but the sad fact is that the rabbis and the scribes added a lot of laws um, to it which didn't come from God, and they formed their own man-made traditions, man-made religion. So it's very important to understand that it's, it's only a small sect within the Jewish people that are involved in this uh, um, Sabbatarianism, it's called. And so you got to realize that. Um, but you got to be aware of it as well. And uh, that uh, is, is basically a, a branch of the Illuminati. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. And may the Lord bless you.